Welcome back to the shop today, guys. It is too early to be doing anything, but I have to get to it because there's just not enough time in the days anymore. Got a new project. Uh, this is not my truck. This is a customer's truck. We're going to put a turbo on it. So this guy is a 1985 Ford F-150 uh, Explorer edition, I think. I think it's got the tags on it. Yeah, Explorer. Or at least that's the bag, badges he has on it. Um, so this motor is a 408 Stroker, small block Ford, uh, Windsor. Uh, my buddy Jamie at Competitor's Edge built this guy. So you know it's good. And uh, the guy wanted a turbo, and Jamie decided to say, hey, I know a guy who's got no time to spare uh, to uh, put a turbo on for you. And just like any other customer, he wants it in an unrealistic time frame. Um, but to be honest, would we, would any of us be any different? Probably not. I would want it done quickly, too. Summer just started. This is one of those things that probably should have happened uh, during the winter, or waited till winter, because this thing runs pretty healthy on nitrous, from what I hear. Uh, yeah, pretty cool little street truck. Uh, nothing too crazy. Oh, I mean, the motor's pretty nuts, but uh, that is what it is. And uh, the customer purchased a lot of his own parts. Uh, now, I think uh, Competitor's Edge helped them uh, spec out a lot of things, I think. Uh, so I trust their judgment on this. Sometimes when a customer brings you parts, you have no idea what you get. But anyway, we got a box of miscellaneous aluminum tubing. This is my plastic. I'm going to cover this bad boy because it's a little shinier than I'm used to. And uh, when people give me shiny things, I have to be careful. Uh, this is the turbo. Uh, this is a VS Racing uh, 80 millimeter uh, 134 AR. 132 AR. Uh, big turbo. At least for, you know, for me, it's big turbo. Intercooler, this is going to be one of the big challenges, is fitting this guy in there. This thing's four inches wide, and there is not a lot of room up front. Uh, and then, uh, we got headers. Now, some of you might already be saying, hey, those are LS headers. Yes, they are LS headers. Tube spacing's the same, and I'm going to cut flanges and put them on here. Why are we doing that? A couple of reasons. A, you can get a set of these headers. For a fraction of the cost, you can get Ford turbo headers. Uh, these are forward and ups. I might rotate them and run them forward and down. We'll, we'll see. There's a lot of unknowns here. If there's room for it, I'm going to go down. That be for for the main reason of being able to access uh, plugs, uh, plug wires, some of the wiring. If you guys needs to check lash or anything like that. Because once you start running the pipes over top, you can't. You can't get mitts like mine in there. And he also has a lot of his electronics right here. So if there's, I'm not putting the turbo on this side. I think I'm going to put it on that side just because of room. But if there's hot piping and stuff like here, you're going to be working around those things when that stuff is lava boiling hot. And nobody wants that. So I'm going to start kind of unpacking some stuff, seeing what I have. Uh, kind of make a list, I guess, uh, of what I need to do. And... Uh, and get after it. I think the first two things I'm gonna focus on is turbo location and uh, header fab. Uh, these are actually the same headers that you saw me do in a previous video and I'll post it up here, uh, where I replaced the flange because these heads had a different flange on them. Again, that makes things more expensive. So going the LS header route and just re-welding a new flange on again, kind of the way to go. So yeah, turbo location, uh, because it's easier to have that kind of set and then you work from there. But that's also in conjunction with the headers. So headers and turbo location are plan A or, you know, priority number one. And then we can start routing everything else. And then, yeah, and then we got to punch holes in the rad, rad cradle and stuff like that, make room for that intercooler. And then charge pipe, and then we also got to, he wants it tied into the exhaust he has now, uh, which is going to be a challenge in itself as well. So we will see how that goes. But anywho, 
I'm going to start mocking some stuff up, making a list and checking it twice, and then we'll get after this. Okay, so we got the original headers out. They are sitting here. And uh, so now once you, once you get those things out, it almost looks like a guy has a lot of room to work with. Look at all that space. You'd think a guy could do really well, but that's tricked me before. Things get tight really fast. This side's going to be a little bit of a fuster cluck yet because of his air conditioning lines, water lines, uh, electrical, stuff like that. I still think, sorry, let me rephrase this. We'll probably still do up and forward. That way I have room to send the exhaust back. But it's going to make it really, really hard to get at the sparkulators. Sorry to quote uh, Vice Grip Garage on that. Uh, spark plugs. So I might just do some uh, test fitting of the headers and kind of come up with a plan. And I'm also trying to find a good spot to brace that plate off of the... the uh turbo flange this guy this guy needs to get mounted somewhere he got the i like this one it's got the two sides for mounting i'm actually going to try to utilize both as much as i can this is like a 50 or 60 pound turbo it needs to be supported uh you're not going to hang that off of headers and have it last especially with my welds if you know what i mean so i'm trying to figure out what's the best thing to do there the customer did mention that he wouldn't mind relocating his uh, power steering pump a little tighter to the engine. Problem is that that's a big job in itself, uh, and I don't know if I'm going to tackle that for him. So I was thinking I might take these four bolts. I might lift this guy up, put a plate underneath it that I can, and have some flanges that I can weld a, a brace to, to hang it off this way. That was a quick, quick solution because usually I would have tried to gone off the head. Uh, but because we're running full accessories on this thing, it's a little bit more difficult. But I'm going to do some more mocking up and we'll see where we go. So my last clip, I said I wasn't going to take on that uh, project of relocating the power steering pump. But I think I have to. So I can't go down. I can't go forward and down with the headers. I'll have to go forward and up due to space constraints with the chassis. Like the actual cross member of the truck gets in the way. I can't get these headers down far enough. I even took a little field trip, went to my buddy, uh, Matt, Matt of some trades, if you want to see him on YouTube. Doesn't have a lot of videos, but he just finished turbocharging his Mustang. Now I know they're different, but he has down and forward headers on his. Uh, and the motor in those cars is higher on the frame. So he's got way more room to do that than I do. So the frame is an issue, so I have to go forward and up. So I have them just kind of placed in here. I don't have the flanges made yet. I just have one bolt uh, holding these guys in right now, but just so I can get a visual. So I took off the power string pump. Alternator is also in the way. That needs to get relocated. So I'll be relocating everything in a complete shift from what I was gonna start with because now I need to make sure I know where those pieces are gonna go before I can actually mount anything because uh, I don't wanna take too big of a risk and not have a home for those things and then run a pipe that needs to go right by it or something like that. But I got the CNC plasma table, so I'm hoping to make some brackets for this guy. So I'm going to do some measuring, come up with a bracket plan. Power steering pump actually shouldn't be too bad. Uh, alternator might need to get a little creative. Uh, we're also going to have to tackle some of this stuff, uh, some of the routing of these hoses and wires. We're going to have to rethink a little bit. Uh, because of where the headers are going to be located. But I think I should have room. I'm going to do hard 90s down on both. And we're going to scoop up, go underneath. I don't know if we'll go below the crank, but we'll go up. And we're going to come up in this area for the turbo. That's the plan. Anyway, so I'm going to get to getting the accessories back on in an appropriate spot. And one thing after another. Let's keep at it. Okay, so day two, I uh, had a cut yesterday short, but anywho, uh, where are we at? Uh, I was re uh, relocating the uh, power steering pump and the alternator. Uh, I think I have a plan. I actually really lucked out. Uh, this is just, I just cut some uh, templates out of 16 gauge. Uh, this was the same bracket I built for another Ford and it seems to bring it underneath. It'll just be a different style of alternator that'll be needed, but I think that's a small price to pay to get the turbo in here. So that'll bring that down and closer. And then I also made this bracket here. I don't know if you can really see that much, 
but uh, here, let me see if I can get you in here a little better. There you go. So that's the bracket uh, for the alternator or power steering pump. Again, I just made it out of thin 16 gauge. Uh, just that way I had a template because I got to get going on this, you know, and I wanted to make sure that my plan would actually fit and work. And now I can make it out of thicker material, aluminum, steel, I don't know yet, but uh, we'll come up with something. Um, so I also had my flanges cut. Now I was pretty lucky. These are the same flanges that I cut for those guys. The only difference is these are out of stainless. Those are out of mild steel. Kind of wanted to keep everything stainless. Uh, so I got these cut. I did not cut these on my CNC. Uh, it's just a nicer job if you find a shop with a laser. And lucky for me, I work at a place with a laser. So, you know, I get some pretty sweet deals. So I do want to try cutting some header flanges myself, though. I'd like to be able to do that myself. But I don't have a lot of experience with stainless, let alone 3 8 material. So this was just faster and easier. So now that I kind of have an idea of where everything's going to go, I could take these headers out, chop them up, put the correct flanges on, and then we can see where that takes us. And so with a little bit of work with a Sawzall, because it was the thinnest blade I had, I do have a bandsaw sitting back there that one day I will do some minor repair and have a bandsaw, because that would have worked way better and a lot faster. One day I'll have that. But for now, just cut this guy off like so. And these guys are gonna go on like so. Should work. Now I did find that these things have a little bit of bow in them, so I'm trying to work that out of them right now. Have a little bit flatter of a surface. So what I'm gonna do is get these tacked on now, and then uh, we'll, I'm gonna just tack them, throw them back in the truck, make sure they still fit the way they should before I get too crazy. Weld them up, bolt them on, and then those are more or less done. They'll probably have to come off a few times for you know mock-up purposes, but uh, that way we can keep moving forward. I also have the intercooler kind of roughly mounted. It's probably not where I'm gonna keep it, but this is just to give me an idea of what I'm doing or what I might need to cut away to get the tubes in and out. And then I gotta work on a support bracket for the turbo. Now I was gonna put the turbo on the past on the driver's side, sorry because there's a little bit more room to work with, but uh, I don't know, I'm having second thoughts. There's not a lot of people putting them on the driver's side. Uh, part of me wants to just do it because I feel like that's the right thing to do right now, but I got little voices in my head telling me to put it on the passenger side. But uh, I might once I get the headers done, then I'll really focus on that and find out what I'm gonna do there. But I'm gonna get these tapped up. Okay, so I got the header flanges uh tacked on to the headers and they all fit really nice and they the, the tubes line up all good that one's just cooling down i welded that one up a little bit on one side letting her cool down and settle a little bit this one's gonna be next so i'm gonna end this video here but uh the next video you'll see the headers on uh and i think i'm going to tackle more of the intercooler i think i have that where i want it now and we're also going to be cutting the brackets for the power steering and the alternator. I have a mock-up alternator that I'm going to use. Uh, that's a different style than what was on there. It's a V-belt. I'm going to have to switch pulleys if I can. But uh, that way we can get uh, get really moving. I am waiting on my hot side piping. Should be here this week. Then we can go real crazy with it. But So that's why I'm going to switch to the intercooler now. Make sure that's mounted where I want it to and that the grill will fit. Uh, and then once I have that, then it's just piping. Piping, piping, piping. So anyways, guys, thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Uh, and we'll see you on the next one. See ya.